All right, welcome to another episode of Black Swan Revelations. My name is Shane, and in today's video, we're going to be asking the question, why did Delton Thomas get excommunicado? If you've ever seen the movie John Wick, John Wick basically got kicked out of the Continental and had a bounty because he actually killed someone in the hotel, which was forbidden. That was against the rules. And so he was chased in the various uh, movies thereafter. Great series, by the way. But the question in this one, in this video is, why did Delton, and I'm saying Delton, D-A-L-T-O-N. Some people say I'm saying Doubting. Thomas, but I'm saying Delton Thomas. Why did he get basically excommunicated from Frontier Alliance International? What happened? And if you don't know, uh, feel free to leave a comment as to what you know. Why do you think he got excommunicated, excommunicated from Frontier Alliance International. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play a video from Joel Richardson um, outlining a little bit of the reasoning. And I think what's going to happen over the next few weeks is there's going to be more coming out of this story about um, the reasons why uh, Delton Thomas uh, resigned and what were some of the of the implications and is he allowed to come back? Um, I'm under the understanding right now that as of today, Delton Thomas is not allowed back to FAI studios. He's not, he's not welcome. He's not allowed back and they're doing a investigation uh, with this. I believe they're using an outside party. I think they're called Grace to investigate this because they use this organization um, usually goes after people that are involved in scandals, whether that's finances, money, uh, whether that's um, through the various teams on the inside of the organization, like was there sexual misconduct going on, sexual affairs, all this kind of stuff. So this is what is uh, being investigated right now. And uh, from what I understand, Delton was had to basically sign an agreement saying that he will never, ever, ever, with the for the history of FAI Studios never return to their organization. That was part of the agreement of him resigning. I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. This is going to have ramifications on FAI Studios. I will be surprised if they're around in 2024. Because this there is a rumbling going on that that is that is this is more serious than first meets the eye and this is something that uh i guess Dalton has been through before uh, about 10 years ago or so um they decided to deal with it internally it was my understanding and uh, i guess this happened again so before it happened with a team member and now it happened with someone outside of the organization i believe but this is damaging because you have Delton Thomas teaching probably half of their videos are by Delton Thomas. And some of them are good teachings. And some of them are a little bit off. But we don't have to agree with everything because these are our brothers in the Lord. But while he was teaching, while he was asking for money, to build bunkers, to help uh, refurbish bunkers in the Golan Heights, this was going on, this uh, sexual misconduct. It's just, uh, I'm going to phrase it that way because I, I think there's going to be more coming down the pipes 
in the next in the following days, weeks, all this kind of stuff. So I wanted to play a video from Joel himself, who who uh, made an announcement a couple of days ago, and I guess Dalton had resigned already for a couple of weeks now. But he wanted to uh, make a video about this, being proactive and being open, being transparent, and. Delton and Joel are very close. I'm telling you, they're very close friends. So this is going to affect Joel as well. Not only spiritually, financially as well. This is going to affect the organization. <clears throat> because they had a conference last year in Dallas. And Delton was the front runner as when they would pray about it and talk about it. It was like, you know what? Out of all the cities in the United States of America, Dallas is the best place to hit. Why? Well, one is they're a huge Christian melting pot. There's lots of people that are Christians in Dallas. You don't have to go very far. There's mega churches in Dallas. There's oil in Dallas, and that was one of the main reasons why um, FAI decided to go to Dallas, because there's a lot of money there, a lot of money exchanging hands. That's not the only reason why they went to Dallas, but that is a big one, because they wanted, in order to do something big, you got to tap into where the money is. You don't go to a small town. So they wanted to go to Dallas, and I think this is going to have ramifications down the road like they may not be able to meet in Dallas in 2024 if they're planning on doing that and there's also IHOP is going through their own stuff so I think what is going to be happening in 2024 is there is going to be a cleaning a house cleaning on all the churches on all the mega churches all the huge churches they're going to get cleansed because you can't get away from the word of God. You can't. If you spend all of your time creating new ideas and theories and stuff, and you're not focusing on the Bible, you're going to get into the weeds. And this is what happens when you go off track and you focus on other things. And Joel and Delton have been focusing hard for the past six months or so coming against pre-tribbers. And I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Most Christians believe in a rapture. They just disagree on some of the timing. But they spent a lot of time and energy and resources coming against pre-tribbers saying that this is the most dangerous doctrine that you could teach anyone out there is the idea that Jesus Christ can come at any time. The idea that a Christian prepares his heart for the coming of Jesus Christ every single day. When we wake up, we think about Christ, we read his word, we study, we pray, we go to church, we go to Bible studies, we encourage, we edify each other, we build each other up. That is satanic, according to Joel Richardson and Dalton Thomas. To them, these are the worst doctrines to teach. So I'm going to play a video, and then I'm going to share my thoughts after the video uh, with Joel Richardson, and then uh, we'll just go from there. So here we go. This, again, this is just a couple of days ago. Hey friends, it's Joel Richardson. So as the chairman of the board of Frontier Alliance International, I thought it was appropriate that I make the first official statement as an organization since announcing the resignation of our founder, former director, and our friend, Dalton Thomas Lipsy. So without uh, it needing to be said, obviously we are all incredibly heartbroken uh, this has been a, a deeply painful, disorienting, and humble season, not only for FAI, but for the body of Christ at large. And I know that many of you uh, who are watching, supporters, followers, uh, many of you are also heartbroken, confused, 
Uh, and we just want to acknowledge that this is an incredibly painful and humbling season. Our posture within the organization, uh, corporately, and also just as individuals, our posture in all of this, just to be clear, is we want to be as transparent. We want to be as humble in all of this. We want to embrace the correction of the Lord over our lives and as an organization. Um, our attitude is essentially, let's lay everything on the altar. The fire of God is burning. And whatever's not of him is the only thing that will remain. It's the only thing that's worth remaining. And so it's to that end that when we did announce uh, Dalton's resignation, I personally mentioned on social media that we have engaged, we were in the process of engaging with a firm called Grace. Uh, Grace is one of these outfits that specializes in investigating and doing third-party neutral investigations into ministries and organizations when there's a scandal or when their founder and CEO has some type of a moral failure, this type of thing. So, so they're bringing in a third-party organization. This is why I say this is serious. I can't overemphasize this seriousness of this matter because they spend a lot of time going to Israel and converting not only Jews to Christianity, but also Muslims. And the founder has been, whether he confessed, I'm not sure if Dalton came forward and said, this is what I've been doing uh, for the past couple of years. But it, it kind of sounds like this is more than just infidelity. It sounds like this is more than adultery because he is married. This sounds a little bit more uh, on a financial scale because why why would you need to bring grace in when their their expertise is to handle scandals of a sheer magnitude? And why would Joel just before Christmas, why would he need to announce this and say this is what they're doing when Joel, when Delton had resigned a couple of weeks ago? Why do you need to do this right now? What's going on behind closed doors? That's the question. I'm not questioning that Joel should do this or not. It's just the timing of it is kind of interesting. I would have thought perhaps you would have done it the day that he that Delton resigned and then said, uh, moving forward, this is what we're going to do. But Delton has resigned and then just leave it at that. But it kind of sounds like it's really serious right now. So this is why Joel is washing his hands clean by saying we're bringing in a third party because this is beyond our control. This is out of our boundaries of, of something where if you have something in church, you just have to read 1 Corinthians. Paul tells uh, church followers how to deal with instances of infatality, fornication, especially if you're in leadership, especially if you call yourself a brother, what you're supposed to be able to do. So I'm actually surprised that it wasn't good enough to ask Dalton to resign because if if this was just if if it was a singularity uh, having an affair, you would think they could just take care of this internally and just say, Delton, you have to resign from your position because uh, of what you're doing. But if you stop doing it and you confess and all this kind of stuff, and you go through a program or whatever to come back so that you don't do it again that you are welcome back into our organization. That's that's what you would do within a church. You're like, if you stop doing what you're doing, because everybody has sinned at one time or another. So to put an extreme like this, where you're not welcome back for the history of FAI Studios, that tells me something serious has happened. There's no forgiveness. There's no going back within the organization like i'm sure they're still friends but i have a feeling joel is going to stay away from delton while this investigation is going on in order to protect the organization you can't have joel and delton having coffee talking about stuff because it looks bad 
and you can't have other members of FAI Studios hanging out with Delton. So Delton is on his own right now. He is considered an outcast. I don't know how else to word it, but if you're not welcome back, you're an outcast. So I don't know if Delton is going to start another organization. I don't really know how this is going to bounce, how he's going to bounce back. So we'll just have to stay tuned and see what happens. Maybe what I would like to see is uh, a public state and a statement from Dalton himself. Because again, he's responsible for probably half of the teachings of the FAI Studios. He's the founder. And if you don't have him speak on this, it's going to be a lot of hearsay moving forward. Like, is he leaving his wife? Are they splitting up? What's going on with her? Like, how how does this affect her? And do they have children? All this kind of stuff. So this is a big deal. And I appreciate that, that Joel is coming forward sharing this information. Um, but I thought maybe perhaps it would have been done the day of the resignation, not just before Christmas, because now you're going to be making this public to people that have supported you financially. And they're going to be thinking about this over Christmas going into the new year, whether or not they should continue supporting FAI studios, especially if there are signs that this organization is going to crumble. That would be the question that that's going to be on people's minds. Like, how do you undo all the stuff that Delton has created? Because this is basically his, um, he created this whole organization. It came out of him. So how do you erase the history of Delton from existence? You'd have to remove all his videos. You'd have to take them all offline. You have to re remove all of his teachings. And within FAI Studios, you'd have to take them off of all information packages, everything that you have leading into 2024 because they like to make a 10-year plan when they're doing stuff. That is all gone. And don't think that there are people that are in FAI Studios, FAI Frontier Alliance International that aren't thinking about jumping the fence. There's probably many people going, I don't need this right now. I don't need this type of scandal in our life. We don't have the energy or resources to go through the mudslinging that is going to unfold in 2024. And believe me, there's going to be a lot of mudslinging. When people go down, they don't always go down with the ship. They bring other people down. We don't know what kind of a connection they had with IHAP, IHOP, but I know Joel was friends with some of those people there. So if they are going through a scandal right now, I think it's John Rickles. Maybe I'll do a video about them as well. But if they're going through their stuff, FAI Studios going up in flames as well. Man, oh man, this if this doesn't sound an alarm for mega churches, organizations that have a lot of money coming in because we count on you guys to be doing the right thing behind closed doors, not having sexual escapades with your team leaders within your organization when you're supposed to be building the kingdom in the 1040 win window and all this kind of stuff. So it's kind of a black eye against Christianity. So Joel is right. This is this affects a lot of people. This isn't just a little tiny scenario. This is serious business. So we'll continue here with Joel. So they go ahead, they interview uh, all of the different parties. The purpose of this, of course, is to make sure that any victims or potential victims or people that have been hurt, that they are heard in a, in a way that's safe um, in order that they can ultimately find the sense of uh, resolve, the sense of justice. Uh, so again, you only bring in a third party organization like this if you think there are victims. 
if you think there are more more victims and if you think there are more victims coming down the pipes you want to be able to nip this in the bud as quick as you can because of the, if more people come out in the new year saying yes i was affected by delton thomas or I was affected by Joel or some other team members while I was in Israel or in other areas, this is going to be a huge bonfire and they won't be able to snuff it out. So I think this is, I, I've seen this before where there's announcements, we got it under control, we got it under control, and then all of a sudden it starts spiraling fast, fast. Uh, hopefully closure and ultimately redemption uh, that they deserve. The process has to be victim centric. It can't be about protecting and preserving the organization. Okay. The body of Christ has learned a lot about how to do these things properly over the past 10 years. With all so again, it's interesting that he mentioned this and I agree with him 100% on this. You can't protect the organization first you have to protect the victim. So again, this tells me that there's more than one victim because this can affect their whole organization. And there have been organizations, probably including FAI, where they try and keep things like this under wraps and it ends up biting them in the butt later. So I think this is this is the move that FAI is making because they don't they don't want any of this to affect them any more than it already is going to affect them. All of the failures and scandals, and we want to embrace those lessons, okay? So that is that is our posture, um, and by the grace of God, that will be our posture moving forward. So with that said, um, I'd like to announce that as of December 22nd, we did sign the contract with Grace, and so that has now been set in motion. I would assume that things will sort of kick back into gear here just after the new year. Maybe they'll jump right in. I'm not really sure. I'm asking all of you simply for your prayers. Uh, just please pray for us, pray for everyone that's involved in the investigation, and please just be patient uh, with us, and we thank you for your understanding during this time. It's going to, you know, I'm not even exactly sure how long it takes to play out um, until the report is done and, and the conclusions are found and this sort of thing. Okay. So with that said, numerous people, we've been getting flooded with questions like, do you guys have, what, what's, what's your plans? By the way, that's not me kicking in the, the soft, somber music. That's for some reason they decided as an editorial decision to play music in the background. This is to make you feel, I don't know, emotion maybe. Uh, I just... I thought it's kind of weird to add music like this and then just bump it up so loud. Uh, but it's not on my end. This is this is FAI Studio. They decided halfway through to put some somber music in here. And uh, I guess he's just going to go on to what they're doing next. Hopefully this thing gets resolved in maybe a few weeks. Shortly, you know, let's get on with this. Is kind of how I'm feeling right now with Joel is the idea that hopefully we can get this thing, we can get this thing closed so that we can continue with our organization without any bumps. And I'm here to tell you that when there, when Grace is filling out this report, it could take months. It could take months to fill this out because again, it sounds like there's more than one victim here. You got to schedule a time to meet with the victim. You got to schedule a time to interview them. You got to schedule a time to transcribe everything and and compare notes with someone else. This could take, this might even take all year. We don't know. So the idea that you're just going to push this off to the side quickly, I think it's a little early. I think it's a little premature to move on. Do you have intentions on carrying forward? And very simply, the answer is yes. Look, we're all in complete agreement that we have some really fantastic, amazing people on the ground right now throughout the Middle East. And they are good, honest, wonderful, hardworking brothers and sisters, and they are worth fighting for. They are worth standing with. So we have every intention on continuing forward. Our vision 
that we've declared from the beginning. Our purpose is to reach the unreached, the unengaged, to the ends of the earth, at the end of the age. That has not... So they're going to move forward with uh, all their teaching. They're going to be moving forward with uh, their plans, most likely to talk about Matthew 24 and continue on. But I wanted to just play this video for you so that you can kind of see where FAI Studio is at. I'm not trying to twist the knife or anything in this organization. But again, when you start slamming other Christians and telling them that they're, they're under a satanic stronghold, that they're liars, all this kind of stuff, and you're pointing fingers at pre-tribbers, when all we're doing is we're trying to read the Bible and see what it's saying and then apply that to our hearts every single day. Meanwhile, you have an organization like FAI Studios that is struggling with morals on the inside, and it's it's gotten to the point where they now have to hire an external party to deal with all this kind of stuff. It's spinning out of control. And I would, I've always wondered why there isn't any videos. As far as I know, they have a huge library of videos. Maybe it's on their app, but I don't see any teachings on any of Paul's letters, the Pauline epistles. I don't see Romans, which is a great foundation. I don't see any teachings on Corinthians, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians. I don't see any of that in there. I don't see them talking about uh, the cross of Jesus Christ and just honing in on that as a teaching. Now, can I be wrong? Yeah, it's very possible. But I see an overemphasis on the Old Testament, and I see an overemphasis on the book of Revelation only, and an overemphasis on coming against pre-trivers which I find kind of weird. I find it kind of weird. Like my, my channel is called Black Swan Revelations. So you kind of get an idea of what my channel is about. It's about end times. It's about the time that we're living in. Are we in a potential Black Swan event? That's why I call it Black Swan Revelations. It's because when you're in a Black Swan event... And I don't think Joel knows that he, his organization is in a potential Black Swan event right now. But the three criteria that happens when you're in a Black Swan event is, the first thing is, is you can't predict it. You don't see it coming. You don't know that you're in it. That's one of the factors. The second factor is it's a financial interruption, as in it could collapse your business. And this is why I say FAI Studios is in trouble right now. They may not be able to see the writing on the wall, but this incident with Delton Thomas could collapse their organization overnight. It could be like a deck of cards stacked up in a pyramid and then just gets blown over. We don't know. They don't know. They're assuming that they could just move on right away. But the third thing is, is when you're on the outs after it's over, after the Black Swan event is over, you look backwards in time and you go, yeah, the signs were all there. We should have saw this coming. We should have saw this coming. Especially if people within the organization of FAI Studios knew that Delton Thomas had an affair. If they knew that and didn't do anything, and now there's more than one victim, that's on them. That's on them. And this is what causes a black swan event to happen. Again, you don't see it coming because if you saw it coming, you could deal with it. And it has to be something that interrupts your, your organization to a point where it'll never be the same moving forward. And I hope they bounce back. I really do. Because I think it is possible to bounce back. But I don't know what happened. That's that's the problem right now. It's easy for me to say, yeah, you could just rebuild and all this kind of stuff. Because it sounds like this is a church problem that they could deal with on the inside. But 
to go outside and hire an external source tells me that this is serious beyond what we can even comprehend because they're keeping it pretty tight lipped right now. And we don't hear anything from Thomas, from Dalton Thomas. He's been quiet. So I don't know, is there five victims? Is there 10 victims? Is there 100 victims? That's the question. Did he affect people in Muslim nations where they were witnessing to people? Did he affect people in Israel, Israelis? Was he having a relationship with people in Israel? Because now this can affect FAI studios from going there. You see what I mean? This is a black swan event for FAI studios. My prediction is they're not going to bounce back from this one in 2024. That's my prediction. Unless they do something miraculous and turn this, this thing around from the inside out. Like you got to go through everyone, everyone, and you got to ask the hard questions. How do we avoid this from happening again? You can't have team members going off by themselves, male and female, to pray with each other. If you want to see an example of what happens within a church, read 1 Corinthians. People mistake getting close to God males and females, men and women, as they get closer to God, they are worshiping together with someone from the opposite sex. And what happens is because you have so much love for the Lord, some of that transitions to the person next to you and you think you're in love with that person because you see them and you admire them and you're like, wow, that person loves the Lord so much. They love the Lord more than my spouse. My spouse doesn't want anything to do with church. This person is amazing. Wow, I wish I had a husband or a wife like that person. And then they get together. And when they sleep with each other, they wake up and they go, I hate you. I hate your guts. Yeah, well, I hate you too. And they fall away from the church and they disappear. That's what happens. Why? Because they they mistook what was happening as they approached God, as they got closer to God. They were looking around going, man, am I feeling this love for these people around me? It feels over, almost overwhelming, not realizing it's their love for the Lord. And they got mixed it. They mixed it up with each other. And all of a sudden they're like, wow, I, I actually feel for this person. And it's that's not that's not what you're actually feeling. It's your love for the Lord, but it's transitioning over to people. And we saw this in Corinthians. They were sleeping with each other like crazy. And Paul's like, what are you guys doing? This, The Gentiles don't even conceive of this stuff. We've got to stop this. So because they had freedom in Christ, and as they drew closer to Christ, all of a sudden the flesh kicked into high gear and they're like, well, I think I love this person. But they got caught up in the emotional feelings of getting closer to the Lord. And this happens all over the place. If you're not careful, this is why you need to protect the men and women of the church. You don't have meetings with, with people of the opposite sex behind closed doors after hours, in coffee shops, in remote areas, all this kind of stuff. Instead, you just do it openly, in public, with a witness. Invite the couples together, the husband and the wife. You don't need to meet with the wife separate from the husband. If there's an issue with the husband, you meet with the husband. You don't meet with the wife first, then the husband. That's how mixed signals start happening. And as you're counseling someone from the opposite sex, all of a sudden you start feeling for them because, and they're feeling for you because you understand them and you're hearing from them. And then all of a sudden you end up doing things that you would have swore on the Holy Bible itself that you would never do anything like this. You're sickened inside. But what I'm trying to tell you is that's what happens 
if you don't keep your flesh in check, as in letting your flesh die, it happens as you draw closer to God. You can mistake that for being in love with someone else, having a crush on someone else, going, wow, they're so spiritual. I love and respect this person. You keep pouring praise on that person. Next thing you know, you're sleeping with that person. And then the whole mega church or organization collapses and people's lives are ruined. So this is why you have to take this stuff serious and you can't make fun of other, what people believe. Like again, back to the pre-tribulation, you keep hammering on people going, you guys are under a satanic stronghold. You guys are demonic. You're like a cult and you bang, 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 bang. And all of a sudden you're, you're not realizing that the enemy is working inside your heart and lustful desires and all these other things are creeping in instead of focusing on the word of God. Because if you focus on the word of God, now you can be corrected right away, instantaneously. But if you're isolating and you're building teams and you're isolating teams and you don't have a protection when someone signs up or joins your organization and you don't have it all written out, here's our code of conduct. If anybody acts this way, come talk to human resources or whatever it is. If you don't have that going on and you're just used to taking tons of money, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. So anyways, I'll be curious to see what happens with this organization over the next few weeks. Maybe I'll give you an update in another video if I hear any more news. But again, if you're part of this organization, if you've been supporting them financially, I would say uh, continue doing what you're doing, but pray for them. Seriously, pray for them because this can happen to any organization. That's the point I'm trying to make. This can happen to anyone, any person. And I don't know what Dalton's life is going to be like. I don't know if he's all alone, if he's thinking suicide thoughts, whatever it is. Don't know. Don't know if him and his wife are secluded and they have this worked out. Don't know. We're left guessing right now. If you're outside the organization. So that's why it's difficult when Joel presents this a couple of days ago. And if people haven't heard that this is what happened to Delton, they got all these questions now. And I bet you the email box is just overflowing for Joel and the whole organization when they're trying to prepare for 2024. And now they're getting inundated with people asking questions. What's going to happen to this organization? What's going to happen? This is serious stuff, serious stuff, folks. So again, I'm not trying to twist the knife in anybody. Hopefully you can see that in this video. I'm not trying to make fun or make light of this matter. This is probably the most serious matter. I wouldn't even jump into any more teaching if I was Joel Richardson until this all got figured out. I wouldn't make any more videos about Revelation, about Matthew 24, about attacking pre-tribbers, mid-tribbers, post-tribbers. I would be focusing on yourself, your marriage, your staff, the organization. It's all basically you bat down the hatches. I don't know if that's the right expression, but basically all hands on deck. That's what I'm looking for. This is serious from every level within the organization. And there will be a ripple effect. I can see this coming. This There's going to be a serious ripple effect coming. And it's not just going to be through FAI. It's going to be other organizations, including mega churches, are going to be hit hard in 2024 like we've never seen before. This could be just a ripple effect right now. Anyways... If you got something out of this feel free to subscribe feel free to share your thoughts let me know what you think and uh don't forget to subscribe and uh let me know where you're watching this video from as well thanks for watching